It used to be that in order for artists to promote their music to the waiting world, all they had to do was plant themselves in their cushy armchairs, open up their MySpace account, copy and paste the sentence, Hey man, thanks for the ad, check out my music, to the countless MySpace users eager to hear something fresh and exciting. Then, the artists would sit back and watch as a new generation of music fans flocked to them. How times have changed. In the music world of today, success and adoration go not to those who can spam the most accounts of a dying social network, but rather to those who can demonstrate the greatest level of woke. In the 2015 London Marathon, a woke artiste who calls herself Madame Gandhi participated in the race where she, according to wearyourvoicemag.com, made a bold statement by free bleeding throughout the race. I don't really know why, but apparently any time a woman advertises her period, this is apparently an indication of extreme wokeness. This artist's most listened to song on Spotify, a grand total of around 855,000 listens, is called The Future Is Female. Four years later, and she is still a touring artiste and activist. In 2016, Taylor Swift posted in Instagram, encouraging her followers to vote for the Democratic Party, explaining that she believed in the fight for LGBTQ rights and was terrified and sickened by a systematic racism. This year, Taylor Swift released a song entitled You Need to Calm Down, a brave and stunning repost to the hatred and bile of those who voiced their opposition to the LGBTQ movement. Last year, Taylor Swift was number six on Forbes' list of top earning musicians, making $80 million. The highest earner on that list is U2, whose resume on wokeness is so thick that it would make the Communist Manifesto look like a university pamphlet on trans rights. In 2018, U2 gave their support to the Repeal the Eighth movement in Ireland, a movement which sought to remove the part of the Irish constitution that guaranteed the right to life before birth, and succeeded in doing so. While we're on the topic of abortion, only a couple of months ago, Miley Cyrus released a photo of herself licking a cake that celebrated abortion as a form of healthcare, a well-timed piece of promotion that coincided nicely with the release of her recent EP. This stunt was a total success, almost every political talking head on YouTube was talking about it and at a time when she had a newly manufactured product to promote. And now we come to perhaps my favourite band, Radiohead. Just last month, on the streets of London, an army of women, trailed by a followers camp of neck-bearded soy enthusiasts calling themselves Extinction Rebellion, exploded onto the streets to block traffic, take over public spaces, confuse tourists and locals alike, and make loud noises about how we're all going to die and need to completely destroy our economy and way of life in order to avoid this. The group wants a carbon-free Britain by 2025. Very woke. Radiohead were quick to jump on this opportunity to fight the power and announced that they would be making their OK Computer era demo tracks available online and that all sales generated from this would be donated to Extinction Rebellion. All this is to say nothing of how musicians have responded to Donald Trump, the Lucifer of the religion of wokeness. After calling Trump's presidential run a moronic charade of a campaign, R.E.M. released a song to protest him called World Leader Pretend. During the 2016 campaign season, Adele said the following, Don't vote for him. I am English. But what happens in America affects me too. I'm 100% for Hillary Clinton. I love her. She's amazing. John Legend has accused Trump of racism many times and constantly insults him on Twitter, as does Cher. Bruce Springsteen has called Trump's actions as president a crime against humanity. And during Trump's campaign in 2016, a project called 30 Days, 30 Songs was launched. This project encouraged artists to release anti-Trump songs. The project is still active and now has 172 anti-Trump songs and is promising to eventually have 1,000 songs. Artists on the playlist include U2, Pearl Jam, Sonic Youth, Kate Bush, Bruce Springsteen, Arcade Fire, Elvis Costello, The Black Eyed Peas, Green Day and The Rolling Stones, among many others. Including a lot of dead artists for some reason. Tupac, Bob Marley and James Brown are among the deceased artists who apparently came back to life to remind us all that Orange Man Bad. 
But some people couldn't be bothered to crawl out of their graves to fight the deranged Orange Cheeto dictator. I thought you were cool, Kurt! Amazingly, in spite of the counsel of our moral batters in the music world, Trump was elected, showing that, although being ultra-woke may make you a superstar, it cannot make you the designator of political power. So, you see the problem? How can the non-woke, those bedroom guitarists incapable of displaying their periods in public, those struggling buskers who lack the ingenuity to display controversial political positions on baked goods, those home studio singer-songwriters who aren't important enough to have a political opinion, the young groups of musician friends who jam together and dream of following bands like Radiohead into eternal glory, but who don't have sufficient funds set aside to survive an economic collapse, the young up-and-comers who have little interest in donating songs to help achieve the political goals of people they have never met, the long-dead artists who have not been invited back from the dead to promote the ideals of the living. What can those artists do? What chance have they got to promote their music? The truth is, there's nothing they can do. They're simply not among the enlightened. But take comfort from the fact that, once all carbon emissions have been outlawed and the power goes out, the superstars cannot rob us entirely of our music. In the words of a great artist, when the power runs out, we'll just hum. <laughs>